I'm Sarah from Made Simple. Today we're going to show you how to make your own lovely moisturising body cream. You can use one of our body cream making kits or you might have your own ingredients that you want to try yourself. I've got Oliver here and he's going to help me. I'll read out the instructions and we'll show you how easy it is to make your own body cream. Right Oliver, what you want to do is get everything out of the kit, get it all set up ready to go. Have the containers set out, empty, all lined up. And have a look at the essential oils that are included in the kit and see which ones you want to add. You might want to make them all the same or maybe you want to make them all different. So once the ingredients are melted and poured into the containers, you're not going to have much time. So that's why it's good to pick your essential oils now and think about what ones you want to do. Open up all the containers as well of the almond oil, the shea butter mm. and the cocoa butter and have those set up ready to go. Citrus blend. Nice choice. Um, okay. oh. So then we've got our pot and our jug ready to go as well. Mm -hmm. Oliver's going to use the double boiler method which is where we have a pot of boiling water and within that pot a glass jug you could use a little glass jar or something like that as well that the ingredients will be boiled in. You could also use a pot and do the ingredients straight in the pot on the stove, but I do find that it's a bit hard to keep the temperature under control and potentially you're going to burn all the ingredients. So this is quite a good way. And just remember if young people are doing this to be aware that the pot and the jug are going to get hot, so have your oven mitt or something nearby ready to go. Once you've got everything set out ready to go, we're going to start melting the ingredients. So start with the hardest ingredients first, which is the beeswax in this case. So pull the beeswax into your jar or container that you're using and melt those. up here of these ingredients melting. As you can see they're melting and turning into liquid. Looking good Oliver, nice job. ingredients aren't fully melted so it needs to be a uh, nice clear Thanks, Ollie. So those aren't fully melted yet you can see there's a couple of little bits there and um, some of the stuff in the middle is not fully liquid so we want it to be fully liquid uh, without absolutely boiling the ingredients and already while we're talking you can see that that's pretty much gone to liquid now mm -hmm. so that's pretty good happy with that so then lastly we add in the packet of tapioca starch so just try and do that carefully because it's quite powdery and it will potentially carefully here yeah, go all over you <laughs> Just get as much out as you can, you don't need to kind of rinse it out or anything like that, just get the bulk of it. Yeah, that looks good. So with the tapioca starch in it, it's going to look a little bit cloudy, and that's okay. So we'll turn that off, um, take the pot out and bring it over to the bench. Remember it might be hot so you might need something to stop you. Once the ingredients have melted and you've taken those off the stove we want to cool the jar of ingredients down. So here we've got a bowl of water and we've also put some ice cubes in it because it's Pretty hot day today, extremely hot in fact, so um, these ingredients might take a little longer than normal to cool down. So if you set the jar in that uh, bowl of water we've got set up there and just stir, stir using that stirrer 
We're going to do this continuously until the ingredients just start to set slightly. Um, this could take a little while, we're probably going to fast forward just a bit. Mm -hmm. is the ingredients are just slightly start to set but as you're moving that stirrer through you'll see either on the bottom or the mixture is just slightly starting to set. Mm. If you take the jar, lift the jar back up and feel the bottom of it, you can feel if it's cold or still hot. Yeah. Oh. So it's probably getting close then and what you don't want to do is for it to start to thicken too quickly. Started to do that. Oh, great. So we'll take that out and we'll start filling the containers. So, probably just do the containers one by one. Okay. Here's the first one. Bring the stirrer. Okay. Oh, yeah, the bottom of that is really starting to set up. Leave a little bit and then you can put your um, foils in. So I don't know if you can see that in the video there, Alice, but in the bottom of that jar that Ollie's got, you can see that the ingredients, if you tilt it, maybe tilt it towards the camera, yeah. the bottom of it's really starting to set. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. So we may need to reheat it too. If it starts to set too much, we can just put it back on the stove and melt it a little bit more, but it might be alright. in these three that you've done yep. and then we can remelt that last one. We have our essential oils here and Ollie decided earlier which ones he was going to put in. Citrus so citrus blend and a couple of them. Yep. So what you want to do is add some drops in. So you'll add probably six to eight drops. The peppermint's quite strong so I wouldn't do that many for peppermint but for the um, Citrus ones, throw those in. And if it started to set too much, which in this case they have started to set a little bit, you might use that stirrer and just really gently kind of move the ingredients around to make sure that the yeah, that's it, that's probably enough, just to make sure it's nicely evenly dispersed. gentle little stir and so what we'll do is we'll put the rest of the ingredients back on the stove and melt that and pop it in but otherwise you're pretty much done all of this made in the barn it's looking good we'll take these barns and put them in the fridge so you want to get them into the fridge and let them cool down for a good few hours probably even overnight just so that they cool quickly if let to set at room temperature you can have problems later on with them starting to go grainy and split out. Yeah. So thanks Ollie! Thanks for watching our video. I've got a couple of little tips to show you at the end. Clean up is a big one in particular. So oils obviously really hard to wash out with just soapy water so just get some paper towel, wipe down the things that you've used um, as much as you can before washing them. We also had some extra Melted ingredients, so I've just used one of the containers that the products came in, fill that up with leftover barm, you don't want to just throw that away. So yeah, get that in the fridge. Uh, another thing to remember is that young kids do need to be supervised around these hot melted ingredients. And check with people who are using these to check for any potential allergies. I would leave out any of the essential oils just in case, even though they are essential oils, that's probably something that um, people might react to. So thanks again very much for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you. Don't forget to go to the website and check out some of the other great tips that we've got for you.
couple of things that I wanted to share with you. One is, of course, to show you the finished product that we made. We made this balm with Oliver, lovely moisturising balm. You could use that anywhere on your body, so it's just an overall body balm. You can get one of our kits that's got just the ingredients, and you could take the almond oil in that and do your own infusion. So you could do kawakawa, calendula, anything like that, and make more of a therapeutic balm. So these are natural balms that you've made. Presumably you know that they've got no emulsifiers, stabilizers, preservatives in them. That's probably why you've made them. So there's going to be some compromises along with that. One of them is the fact that they will possibly change their um, firmness depending on the weather. So in this hot weather they can become softer and then in the colder weather they will be firmer. So keep them somewhere cool, don't have them sitting out in the sun, they will most likely melt. Um, if you're not going to be using them for a while, I would probably even keep them in the fridge. So the fact that there is no um, preservatives, and there's also no antioxidant in it, means that it's not going to last for years and years. I would use these up within six months, I'm sure you will do that anyway, because they're lovely products and you'll um, use them or give them away as gifts. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the cool down process that we did where we took the melted ingredients and we had them in the ice bath and we cooled them, uh, the melted ingredients down. The reason for doing that is to try and stop the shea butter potentially going gritty, which um, shea butter is one of the ingredients in the balm. And I've got an example here of a balm that I made and I didn't do the cool down um, process with it. And you can see it's gone gritty, so the little balls there, that happens when the balm has melted and sort of reset and some components in the shea butter have gone firm um, rather than going back to liquid. So that's why we did that cool down process to try and stop that happening. Still um, no guarantee that that won't happen sort of several months down the track. But that's just an aesthetic thing. Um, as I was saying earlier, there's some compromises that you make when you're making balms and products that are only filled with natural ingredients. So yeah, that's probably one of the compromises that you'll have to make. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you found it informative. I hope you go and look at some of the other videos that we've made that will help you with your um, processes making balms.